I will once again repeat, no one has the right to carry an AK-47 rifle. On the news tonight, Buhari engages Southeast leaders, reiterates commitment towards securing the region. So far, things have been running smoothly. Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board commences the conduct of the 2022 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. Plus, Women Affairs Minister leads female activists to APC Chairman. Hello and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Ianri John and we're live in Abuja. Adela Komi Akere joins me from Lagos. Many thanks for joining us. And just before we begin, it's good to know that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. The federal government says it will deploy its strength to protect innocent and hardworking Nigerians from terrorists and those causing breakdown of law and order in the Southeast region. President Muhammad Buhari hosted this at a meeting with Southeast leaders to round off his working visit to a Boeing state, expressed concern about the deteriorating security situation in the region and directed security agencies to flush out those perpetrating violence in the land. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the details. The last 48 hours, I have been informed of the latest in the round of brutal actions carried out by gang wielding terrorists who prey on innocent and hardworking citizens. President Mohamed Buhari has described as unfortunate that these barbaric acts were visited upon those who have committed their lives to protecting fellow citizens of the country. He once again paid tribute to members of the Nigerian Armed Forces who recently lost their lives in the region. Terrorists must be pushed out from amongst us. I will once again repeat, no one has the right to carry an AK-47 rifle and anyone in, in any part of the country doing so and is not a law enforcement officer is a threat to our peaceful coexistence and should be treated as such. Responding to appeals by traditional, religious and political leaders in the region for the release of the detained leader of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Namdikano, the president maintains that the matter remains in the full purview of the courts where it will be properly adjudicated. My worry is for our hardworking and innocent civilians for whom life is already tough and would like to just go out and earn a decent, honest living. And the government owes them that obligation to protect their lives and property. As we find ourselves in the process of selecting another round of leadership for our country, every citizen must feel that their role counts and they are able to practice their constitutional right without fear or any form of intimidation. May the voice of the people be supreme. President Buhari used the opportunity to highlight some of his government's achievements in the provision of infrastructure in the region, dismissing those peddling false narrative of lack of care and consideration for the people of the Southeast. Governor David Umahi said, President Buhari would be remembered as a man who did not use the plight of the people of the Southeast to play politics but came to their rescue severally. He urged Southern leaders to work towards finding a political solution in resolving some challenging issues, warning that the region is at crossroads. Mr. President had already granted a political solution to be initiated, and so we call on President of Ohanese you know to stop delaying this and not allow politics to come into it and i believe that a listening president our father will listen to that he's one of us and he will continue to be one of us on the 2023 elections the governor said 
He believed strongly in the demand for the presidency to be zoned to the Southeast region on the basis of fairness, equity, justice, and morality. From Abakaleke Ebony State, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the federal government has formally accepted a Boeing state government's offer to take over the management of the newly completed King David University of Medical Sciences. President Maud Buhari announced this at a state banquet organized in his honor by the state government, saying the handover and renaming of the world-class institution as Federal Medical University would soon be concluded. Again, State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. I have decided to accept the offer of your government to take over the University of Medical Science Board. This pronouncement by President Muhammad Buhari, greeted with a standing ovation, is indeed a dream come true for the people of Ebony State. The state government, which constructed the world-class medical institution with centers of excellence for the treatment of cancer, liver, heart diseases, and kidney transplant, made it clear that it does not have the capacity for effective management. President Muhammad Buhari, who commended Governor Dave Umayi for his strong desire to change the narrative of the state, raise high economic status and meet genuine public aspirations, assured him of federal government's collaboration and support towards accomplishing his vision. I have noted the significant projects executed by Your Excellency in the last seven years. You have turned your people proud. I am pleased by the economic development records of the state under your administration. The wonderful network of roads, critical infrastructure, and investment opportunities created in the state. It shows you have zero tolerance for corruption and waste of public funds. The president said he is highly honored that in the life of his administration, Ebony State Government and its people made the right choice to join the governing APC. I command the governor for the courage to join the party at the center and for all his contributions in moving our nation forward. I also commend you for keeping faith with our administration's development programs and the manifestos of our great party, the All Progressive Congress. Governor David Umahi said the giant strides achieved by his administration in the execution of critical projects could not have been possible without the numerous financial assistance to states by the Buhari administration. He also thanked the president for the second Niger Bridge project, rehabilitation of the Inugu International Airport, as well as the reconstruction of Inugu Port Harcourt, as well as Inugu Oka Expressway, amongst others. There is no president like you. You are a man honestly with a generous heart. We assure the excellency that the people and indeed the people of Southeast value you greatly. This wonderfully, partly, not unfair disposition to the plight of our people. Before the state banquet, President Muhammad Buhari inaugurated the new office of the governor's wife, named after the first lady, Aisha Buhari. The new governor's office complex, named after the former governor of the eastern region, Akanu Ibiam. The Muhammad Buhari four-way light tunnel symbolizing the new face of Ebony State, as well as the iconic Ebony State shopping mall. From Abakaleke, Ebony State. Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And still in Eboin, it was a night to remember when the state government hosted President Mohamed Buhari to a sumptuous dinner during his two-day working visit to the state. Chika Okori covered the state banquet and our reports. After the inauguration of some projects and other activities marking the president's two-day working visit in Ebony State, it was time for the start of the nation to demonstrate the usual act of hospitality it's known for to the number one citizen, President Muhammad Buhari. <laughs> Thank you. 
The people did not take chances in showcasing their rich cultural heritage with different traditional dances entertaining Mr. President and other stakeholders. <laughs> In Abakaliki, Chika Okori, NTA News. The 2022 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTMA, commences today with a total of 1,761,338 candidates expected to sit for the examination. Olayin Kaoju reports that the number of registered candidates for the 2022 UTME is 400,000 above that of 2021. Time of the year again, when most secondary school leavers look forward to talking about sitting for the examination that will enable them to gain admission into tertiary institutions. The 2022 exercise is being conducted at 755 computer-based test centers across the country. A visit to one of the CBT centers in Abuja shows that biometrics began as early as 7 a.m. to give candidates a clean bill before entering the examination hall. When I came, I tried my finger out, my thumb. It didn't work at first, so I had to beat. So others came in and tried and tried. So I tried like six times at first before it worked. Candidates had two hours to convince the examiner after months of burning midnight oil. It was more of me reading and getting to answer the question. This is my fifth center today. So far, things have been running smoothly. 528,119 candidates are expected to participate on the commencement day nationwide. Online Kaoju, NTA News. Has the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, been conducted by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, DAMB, has commenced across the 36 states and the FCT? Alapo de Aroa has a package on the examination from across the states. For many of Chief Maruke Ugu reports that the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination is on to a good start, with no major itch observed on the first day of the exercise. In Lagos, Engineer John Adams reports that candidates throwing the examination centers define the win in the prospect of gaining admission into the nation's universities. I had to keep on printing, on printing, on printing, and at one point they were like, they have to like take us, like we have to, they have to schedule another date for us because they were not getting our fingerprints right. When I started, I, I did one subject first, then the system went off. People's system started tripping off, but the engineers came down. In Kaduna, Dauda Mohammed reports that some examination centers designated for this year's UTME have been battling with epileptic network, which is affecting the student's biometric verification. The examination is expected to end on the 14th of this month in Abuja or Labodarewa. NTA News. Joining me live at, in the studio to give more insights uh, into the 2022 UTMA is the Registrar of the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, Professor Ishak Oluyudi. Many thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, now, can you uh, give us uh, your overall assessment of uh, today's outing as regards, you know, the conduct of uh, candidates, the centres, and uh, maybe parents? And, uh, you know, I'm referring to both the good and the downsides uh, now. Yes, um, so far so good. It was a, a very good outing. Uh, in almost all the centres, uh, we currently have... Uh, about 751 centers and we had uh, problems in about six of the centers and um, we are making remedy uh, those students in those six centers uh, we expected it what are the challenges this. you had in the six centers yes they had uh, what they call network uh, problem and what when we talk about network in our own system when you are writing exam um, in CBT exam in Nigeria, we say network. You don't mean MTN, AIT, you mean local area network. The cabling within the center. 
That's where most of the problems come from. So what, what would be your follow-up action to that now? Oh, it's simply to reschedule the candidates. And most of the candidates who had the problem for session this year, and uh, this today, have been rescheduled for 2 p.m. tomorrow in the same center where the center sources. But by this evening, the students will have been rescheduled and they will have received notification of where to go tomorrow. Okay, now since the exams are scheduled for conclusion tomorrow, as a coordinating body, what message do you have for the other parties that will yes, be involved I'm in the exercise? Yes, I'm not saying that the exams will be concluded tomorrow. I'm saying that those who had problems today have been rescheduled for the last session tomorrow. They just that candidates must uh, abide by the rules and parents must keep away from the CBT centers because they are creating problems for their candidates. Of course, today in some centers, parents who are found to have gone beyond the restricted, a restricted area, the appropriate steps were taken, not only against them, but also against the students uh, on behalf of whom they claimed they were there. So I will urge the parents to allow the students to be on their own in writing the examination. Anybody who thinks that there is a shortcut to our system is deceiving himself. There are so many fraudsters on the website, on the social media, pretending. When somebody says, give me your registration number, I will be able to give you the questions. You have seen today that there is nothing like that. They only succeeded in collecting money from you. Unfortunately, we have been able to get those who paid to those fraudsters, and we will take appropriate steps. All those who have their registration number who paid to those fraudsters, of course, they have robbed them of their money, and I hope the security agencies will be able to arrest them. But whether they are eventually arrested or not, all the students who paid to them and their parents will have to pay for what they have done because they have committed examination. In other words, you're yes. satisfied with the conduct of the oh, examination very, today? very, very fine. Okay, we just uh, before I let you go, uh, for someone who wears two caps, I mean, uh, you're coming from the academia and uh, at the same time a political appointee, yes. what's your comment on the ongoing ASU strike? Um, I would just say that um, you should allow me to just say no comment because uh, <laughs> I believe that there is something crazy somewhere and uh, we just must address the situation. We just cannot continue like this and appropriate things are to be done. Um, ASU definitely had its own excesses, but also government has some roles to play. I believe that uh, the problem is somewhere in between and uh, the earlier they, they can come together to look at how to solve the problem, the better. But I think something somewhere, somebody something is had crazy to put, somewhere. Yeah, that somebody to had to put his foot down to say no, enough is enough. And I think at that stage, we will have sanity. What we have now is uh, some craziness going on. That's the way I see it. Thank you so much, yes. Professor Isaac Olid. And of course, wishing you the very best yes, in the conclusion of the much. examination. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the meeting to resolve strike action involving members of the Senior Staff Associations of Nigerian Universities, SANU, and Non-Academic Staff Union, NASU, with the federal government is to continue this Friday to put finishing touches to the remaining grey areas which could not be resolved on Thursday night. The Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngege, stated this while expressing hope of a permanent resolution to the lingering university crisis. Another non-teaching university staff, which is also going to be engaged with the federal government after the meeting with the Joint Action Committee of NASU and SANU is the National Association of Academic Technologists, NAT, which has also been on strike. The meeting with university unions is to, however, begin to yield positive results as the Academic Staff Union of Research Institutions has suspended its indefinite strike over unresolved issues with the federal government. Secretary General of Asuri, Theophilus Undubuaka, in a letter to the Ministry of Labour, has since directed members to resume work immediately. And still on education, the tertiary education fund, TED Fund, is leveraging the university ICT drive to upscale efforts in its current review to improve the delivery system of curricula for higher institutions of learning in the country. This was when the Committee of Vice-Chancellors of Nigerian Universities visited the fund. 
This is also part of ongoing efforts to sustain the reforms in the sector with increased emphasis on the content component of its interventions in the institutions in the areas of ICT, research and reading culture among the students. Have in regards to the digitization of thesis, that we have a particular specific um, collaboration or partnership with you. We are confident that once this is accomplished, it will not only provide open learning resources for researchers and students who want to access previous work done in their respective areas of research, but also promote a culture of academic excellence. The Committee of Vice-Chancellors has also requested the fund to further support its stride to develop a homegrown plagiarism detection software, EgoScan. EgoScan is an application best-in-class solution that will enable final year and postgraduate students undertake a plagiarism check before submitting their projects or thesis. And away from education, President Maud Buhari has extended birthday greetings to Simon Bako Lalong, governor of Plateau State, and prayed for long and healthy life. In a statement, President Buhari described Governor Lalong as a tireless peace worker whose government has shown decisiveness in resolving the many conflicts between the different communities in the state. President Buhari wished the governor good health, happiness and fulfillment as he marks his 59th birthday. Thank you for staying. Former Governor of Zamfara State, Senator Ahmed Sani Yurima, has formally in indicated his interest to join the 2023 presidential race on the platform of the Governing All Progressives Congress. Senator Sani Yurima made this known while addressing journalists after a closed door audience with President Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Edemu Sambu has the details. Dr. Ahmed Sani Yerima was in the State House to not only brief President Muhammad Buhari on his presidential ambition, which he described as well thought out, but also seek his blessings. I'm very happy with the reception and uh, the advices given to me. As a loyal party member, um, I inform Mr. President that I'm ready at all times to accept the wishes and decisions of my party, the APC. On his selling points, the presidential aspirant said as two-term governor and three-term senator of the Federal Republic, he fully understands the problems of Nigeria and has the practical knowledge and capability to address them. I'm sure all Nigerians are aware Mr. President has done his best. He told the country that he was going to fight corruption, insecurity, and he's going to work very hard to ensure economic development and prosperity of this country. If it were not Mr. President, this is his integrity and uncorruptible uh, personal position, this country would have not been what it is today. So I have three points as well, to fight insecurity, fight poverty, and ignorance. There are people who are professors who are well educated in Western terms. But they are ignorant of their society. That is why you see people talking about rotational presidency as if it is an allocation of power. Yerima Mbakura, who was the first governor in Nigeria to introduce Sharia law in his state, allayed the fears in some quarters that when elected president, the same legal system will be forced on Nigerians. Even in the first state, I have never, never required or asked or forced a uh, any Christian to follow Islamic faith because I would have done an unconstitutional act. So if I'm elected by the grace of God, I'm going to be elected under the constitution and I'm going to take an oath to protect and defend the constitution of Nigeria. So I will never do anything unconstitutional. Senator Ahmed Sani Yerima is assuring Nigerians that Zamfara, his own state, remains the stronghold of the governing APC. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News.
Similarly, the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Bunaya Onu, has formally declared to run for President of Nigeria on a platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, saying his decades of political experience and positions held serving the nation will help in driving his agenda of building a new Nigeria. Salihu Gwanara reports. It is that political time again. Politicians are at work with aspirations to lead the country. Senator Ibikule Amosun is pushing towards realizing his ambition to be president of Nigeria. His latest move was the picking of his intent and nomination forms through his representatives at the International Conference Center, Abuja. He has been a good leader. This is a man that has been tested. He was a governor of Ogun State for eight years, and he had done a lot of developmental uh, projects in Ogun State. He is a tribalized Nigerian. So by his pedigree, you know that this is a man that can be given the responsibility to run Nigeria. Thereafter, Senator Amosun and his team were at the residence of the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC. Actually taking the form, and that uh, you're like a lawyer party man, we will just uh, continue to run around to continue with the consultation and uh, go for the primaries. So that's what I came to inform the chairman. I think uh, we're all eminently qualified to run the affairs of this country. So for me, uh, yes, people may say that, oh, we're too many. But I think that is uh, the essence of politics, that is the beauty of democracy. With more consultations in view in the coming days with stakeholders, the President Shurai Speran says he believes in the internal democratic process in the APC that gives equal opportunity to all aspirants. Abdullah Hajia, NTA News. We do sincerely apologize. That report uh, was on former governor of Ogun State uh, picking his uh, nomination form to run as president of the country. We now go back to our earlier report on Ogunaya Onu declaring his intention to also run as president of Nigeria. Ogunaya Onu said a new Nigeria is possible through a selfless leader and that as an icon of peace and unity, he will work to uplift and add value to humanity using the nation's rich human potentials. Nigeria must be self-reliant. We can no longer continue to depend on other nations to solve our problems. We are better equipped to solve these problems ourselves. This is the road that we have to take. This is the road that science, technology, and innovation will make possible for us to take. I have a dream that Nigeria will one day lead the world. Friends, family, and political associates of the aspirant witnessed the event and are hopeful. This is the kind of thing we need in Nigeria, and we believe that somebody with, in, with integrity is not the kind of person that goes after money. Corruption will go, people, school, people will get jobs, and I believe that he can build on the foundation that the pres President Buhari has laid. So he's someone that encourages the youth and the women in particular. Nigerians, the North, West, the East, we are one. Dr. Obunaya Onu from Southeast served as the national chairman and leader of the defunct All Nigerian People's Party, AMPP, one of the legacy political parties that formed APC. In Abuja, Saliu Gwanara, NTA News. Nigeria has welcomed the decision by the United Kingdom to proscribe the indigenous people of Biafra as a terrorist group. A statement from the presidency says the violent secessionist organization has long been proscribed as such in Nigeria, where it carries out the majority of its murderous activities. The statement says it took Nigeria's allies in the UK so long to follow suit due to the deep pockets of IPOB's international network of funders that allow for lawyers and influence peddlers to aggressively lobby for the whitewash their activities in Western courts. And IPOB's influential communication network of TV and radio stations spread misinformation abroad and incite violence at home. It wants the UK authorities to follow up with uh, confiscation of their assets, shots 
down their communication channels and sanction the insurance of visas to IPOPs funders in Nigeria. Such sanctions, the statement notes, played a critical role in combating other terror groups, having that Africa is breeding ground for terror, with local and international groups alike gaining strength across the continent, thriving on the economic devastation of the pandemic. Nigeria's intelligence and security forces, it says, are the first line of defense against such groups, including the ISIS and Al-Qaeda affiliated Boko Haram and Nigeria relies on allies in the West for support to combat them. The statement says IPOB and its 50,000 strong paramilitary units reign of terror has seen villages butchered, school buses settled, and politicians homes bombed and have through international network of radio and TV stations threatened further violence if their demands are not met while inciting violence and religious and ethnic tension between Nigeria's Christian and Muslim populations. It thanks the UK for its decisive action and calls on Nigeria's friends in the US to follow suit in designating IPUB as a terror group. Similarly, Experts in legal and security matters have described the designation of the proscribed indigenous uh, people of Biafra, IPO, by the United Kingdom as a vindication of the Nigerian government's stand that the group's motives are action and actions are wrong. In its latest asylum policy update, the United Kingdom says members of the terrorist group would not be entitled to asylum in the UK. Meanwhile, APOB has been accused of grievous human rights violations in Nigeria, with the latest being the beheading of two soldiers who were proposed, proposed couples. Members of the group, particularly in the southeast, uh, I took exception to the way they have tried to enforce the CETA too. Quite a number of lives have been lost in a bid to enforce the CETA too. And businesses have been crumbled. Economy of the southeast uh, businessmen have been negatively impacted. Uh, so to that extent, I think the UK government did the needful by saying, look, you will not be welcome we will not be able to offer you asylum in the event that you came seeking, uh, uh, you know, refugee status with us. The indigenous peoples of uh, Biafra has been operating by undermining the security of Nigeria. That is what it means. Now the implication is that there is the need for the organization to review its operations. Expression of discontent with any action of government is allowed by our laws and the international laws. What is not allowed is the use of force. Let's now join Adeola in Lagos for more reports. Adeola, it's over to you. Thank you, Iyere. The Federal Operations Unit, Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service, has intercepted 1,000 bags of foreign rice suspected to be poisonous. The acting controller at the unit, Hussein Ejibunu, says careful laboratory analysis revealed that they contained some contents of lead, making the rice unfit for human consumption. Michael Olaleye reports. Despite the aggressive stance of the customs on rice importation, the geometric dimension of seizure indicates the relentlessness of smugglers. <laughs> Here at the warehouse of the Federal Operations Unit Zone A, the volume of rice seized for the month of April put at 7,259 bags is an equivalent of more than 12 trucks. But the worry here is the discovery of a specific brand known as Simba Rice imported from India, in which NAFDAQ analysis indicated that they are poisonous. If you are bringing in poison, something you cannot consume from your country, and you are bringing it in, and we have unscrupulous Nigerians who, because of greed, avarice, selfishness, they will go after all this to make money. 
is sad. This revelation justifies government's position that ban on rice importation is not just to promote domestic market, but safeguard public health and safety. About last two weeks, I met with NAVDAC and I told them we'll be working together that as soon as we get seizures, they should be coming to take samples. The seizure of more than 1,000 pieces of used tires is also in the interest of the public as most of the tires are not just climatically conditioned but elapsed their validity period. Apart from arresting 12 suspects in connection with various seizures in the month of April, which also included 55,800 liters of petrol. The Federal Operations Unit Zone A intercepted crews with duty paid value of more than 500 million naira while raising demand notices in the region of 111 million naira. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. A project aimed at engaging Nigerian communities naturally blessed with the ancient rock art of Nigeria to increase their involvement in the preservation and benefit from the unique heritage has commenced in Nigeria. Diana Ajali, who was at the official exhibition of photos and monoliths of some of the ancient rock art in Lagos, reports that the project is championed by the United States Ambassadors Fund in collaboration with the National Commission for Museum and Monuments. Beyond oil and gas, Nigeria is naturally endowed with abundant natural resources, which can serve as major tourist sites in Africa that will attract more global attention. From waterfalls to the ancient rock art of Nigeria. The rock art has coded messages. It's part of the culture of the South Southern Nigeria. It's bringing back memories of what our forefathers could do that have restored the test of time. The rock art of Africa is one of the oldest, which shows the very emergence of the human imagination. This unique work remains a priceless treasure that is irreplaceable. Through this repatriation of Benin bronze and rest, we look at taking these objects around the world, exhibiting them, and create generating revenue for us. For the United States, one of the best ways to preserve the precious and unique heritage in Africa is through documentation and improved infrastructures, especially through engagement of states owned communities in the promotion of rock acts for posterity. Over the last 10 years, Mission Nigeria, the United States mission to Nigeria, has funded over $1 million in projects, including this one. The exhibition of photos and monolites of some of the rock arts of Nigeria, which have not been seen in public for decades, for the next one month, will be open to the public to see at the National Museum Center, Lagos, from May 5, before traveling to the National Museum, Calabar, in July 2022. The exhibition is expected to continue at the Amadou Bello University in Zaria come September 2022. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. Yes, we are done from Lagos. We thank you for joining us. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng or live and on all our other social media handles for updates. In line with the ideal that charity begins at home, the minister alongside other women acti activists starts with the ruling party, APC. Ngozi Technico completes the report. The minister, Pauline Tallinn, described the visit to APC party secretariat as solidarity to congratulate the chairman over his recent victory at the APC National Convention and to seek his fatherly advice in achieving the cause of Nigerian women. The interaction, however, did not end without without this request for women. The National Chairman of All Progressive Congress, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, commends the minister for her resilience in championing the case involving women, especially in decision-making corridor. We meet cases, not just one case for women. And they're all about Briefing journalists after her audience with the APC chairman, the minister states that the time to change the narrative is now 
as the support of Nigerian women to any political aspirant will be based on the positions to be allotted to women. With the commitments of the minister and other activists, expectations are high for Nigerian women in Abuja. Ngozi, Technical, NT News. In other news, airline operators of Nigeria have announced to shut down operations starting from Monday next week due to continuous rise in cost of Jet A1. A statement by the president of AON, Alan Uyema, stated that operators have carried on deploying and subsidizing their services to passengers in the last four months despite the steady and astronomical hike in the price of Jet A1 and other operating costs. He said over time, aviation fuel price Jet A1 has risen from 190 Naira per litre to 700 Naira currently. No airline in the world can absorb this kind of sudden shock from such an astronomical rise over a short period, while aviation fuel worldwide is set to cost about 40% of an airline's operating cost globally. The present hike has shot up Nigeria's operating cost to about 95%. In the face of this, airlines have engaged the federal government, the National Assembly, NNPC and oil marketers with a view to bringing the cost of Jet A1 down, which has currently made the unit cost per seat for a one-hour flight in Nigeria today to an average 120,000 Naira. The latter cannot be fully passed to passengers who are already experiencing a lot of difficulties. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has secured the conviction and sentencing of a former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Labour and Productivity, Clement Elo, to 12 years imprisonment before Justice Babs Kwewumi of the Federal High Court sitting in Ikoi, Lagos. A statement by the head of media and publicity, Wilson Wujarin, states that Elo was prosecuted by the EFCC on a three-count charge on non-declaration of assets to the tune of 97.3 million naira, receipt of funds to the tune of 65 million naira from Shaw P project contractors, which was domiciled in his personal first bank account number 303-375-0243 and over 14.1 million naira fraud. The statement says the defendant is sentenced to four years each of the counts and it will run concurrently. The judge also ordered the forfeiture of the sum of 97,300,613 naira for the four Koba, respectively to the federal government of Nigeria, being proceeds of unlawful activities. Time for Welcome back. The Nigerian Union of Journalists will continue to adopt dialogue rather than industrial disputes, especially on the poor welfare policy for its members by employers. This came up at the 2022 World Press Freedom Day in Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn reports that the event was organized by the Nigeria chapter of the International Press Institute in collaboration with the Nigeria Union of Journalists. Journalism, like other professions, has direct impact on the citizenry and the society at large. Commemorating the 2022 World Press Freedom Day, practitioners, they say, are expected to be guided by a code of conduct which is key to the attainment of professional excellence. And to recognize that if we want public respect, we should know that the public respects only those who can add value to society. If you don't understand the legal framework of this country as a journalist, you tend to see everything anyone around you does as wrong. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed, in a message, reaffirmed the commitment of the federal government to constantly provide enabling environment for journalism to thrive. It is a responsibility that requires that we have to be circumspect of the use of information at our disposal to avoid misinformation. Journalism under digital siege was the focal point of the symposium. But I wish we could say it the other way around. Journalism, practitioners, in self-siege. 
I think we are the problem of our profession. Key players are also advocating a constitutional amendment that will give proper legislation that empowers the media to effectively practice in the country. We are collaborating to ensure that we bring to fore a working legislation for all of us so that by the time you find out, you know that if you don't pay, it becomes a crime. You will be forced to pay. To give security to journalists in the practice of their profession. But most importantly, I also believe that there should be regulation. Participants were exposed to what journalists and the media in Nigeria need to do to keep safe, retain credibility, and be sustainable. Adebola, Brooks Lane, NTNU. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed grief as several people are feared dead after a boat sank in Merdua, like a government area of Katsina State. In a reaction to the incident, President Buhari said he was extremely pained by the capsizing of the boat carrying mostly children on Salah celebration, saying, My thoughts are with the bereaved families. A statement by Snow Special Assistant to the President on Medium Publicity, Garba Shehu, says, Rescue operations by the state government and National Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA, are ongoing at the site of the tragedy, hoping to rescue missing passengers. The president warned against use of rickety boats, overloading and non-use of life jackets, which have been associated with frequent boat mishaps in the country. And that concludes NTA Network News tonight. Many thanks for watching. And here's a quick reminder that rape is a crime. Speak up and take action. I'm Ian Ray John. Have a good night.